Welcome back everyone. In today's episode, I'll be taking the zero data voxel technique a bit further. Using this 3D zero data voxel technique, we can create inlaid patterns a bit easier, as well as fully utilize all three dimensions when using zero data voxels. Stay tuned. Hello everybody and welcome back. Today's episode is all about 3D zero data voxels. If you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out my other video on zero data voxels. This video here is going to take that concept a bit further and save us a few steps in the meantime. So what are 3D zero data voxels? Let's just jump right in and take a look. Okay, hopefully you guys have checked out the zero data voxels technique video. We're going to go ahead and take that concept a bit further. And basically what I've gone ahead and done is created this sort of empty air cage. This is sort of like a little bit of a guideline or a cubicle letting me know visually that everything inside here is constructed of healed empty air, basically zero data voxels, just like the ground technique we used before. We're just taking this a step further. We're going to make something that's got three dimensions to it versus sort of being stuck along a plane like this floor here in the bottom. So to demonstrate what this does and the advantage, I'm going to go ahead and select this guy. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to put it right into the middle of our floor here. And I'm going to make sure it's below the floor so we get this nice intersection. Now you can see what happened is we don't have a square cutout of our, from our selection box. We've got a nice flush design that's going right up against our floor. Alright guys, now I'll show you how I utilize this technique. And the first thing I like doing is constructing sort of a visual outline of where these 3D zero data voxels are going to lie. Because basically we're going to be working with healed air. So the first thing I do is I construct a cage. And it's usually a good idea to come in with some sort of idea on how big you'd like your design to be. Whether you're going to use this as sort of an inlaid pattern idea or if you're going to do something that's a bit more three-dimensional. I'm going to go ahead and make something that's fairly big. That yeah, looks pretty good. I'm going to come in with my work slab here. I'm just going to fill that completely. I'm going to come back in with my selection tool. What I want to do now is cut out the middle of this. Make sure we have a ceiling and a floor. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and blow that away. And then just make sure I've got the next side. And we'll delete that. There we go. So now we've got this sort of empty cage. And again, this is just a visual representation because when you copy and paste something you've healed, air, you just, well, you can't see it. So it can be a little difficult to work with. So I like making these. It really does help quite a bit. So next thing I'm going to do I'm going to come in. I'm going to select the very inside of this. I'm going to make sure it goes all the way down to the floor. I'm going to come down one to make sure we're inside this box. And the next thing I want to do is use my heal tool. And I'm just going to click heal once. So what I've just done is created a box full of zero data voxels. So if you take a look outside in the map and basically everything that Landmark is made of is of course made of all these voxels. And if we use our selection tool, imagine the entire world is made of this huge grid. And when we use our selection tool, we can see this grid. And then of course, when we use things like the add tool and the delete tool, we can see the size of those grid lines. So basically in the middle here, I've just got this empty pocket of air. And now we can take advantage of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in and make a quick little design. There we go. Now I've got a design I'm pretty happy with. I'm going to go ahead and select this. And then we're going to copy and paste it up just so that I can smooth it out. And I want to get something that's nice and smooth. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and come back to my selection tool. 
And I'm going to move one voxel up off the floor just because I, I hate that puckering stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my smooth tool about four or five times. That looks pretty good. And this is just like the sort of inlaid pattern idea. I'm just going to do one slice. I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste. And then if we put this into our floor, you can see, just like I mentioned in the inlaid pattern video, the inlaid pattern idea, we now have this nice design that's flush with our floor, and we don't have that square selection cutout. So this is one way you can do inlaid patterns, and it actually saves you a bit of time. But of course, what we can also do is take this entire 3D design now, I'll just do the smoothest bits if I copy and paste. And just like I showed you earlier, let's go paste this guy over here somewhere. Let's make sure he intersects with the floor. And there we go. We've got a nice design and it's nice and flush with the floor and we don't have that rectangular or square cutout that we would if we built something out in the world without 3D zero data voxels or air voxels, whatever you want to call them. And just to quickly show you guys an example, if I come over here to something I created without zero data voxels, let's go ahead and select all of it here. Let's go ahead and paste this guy over here next to this one so you can see the difference. And then we'll make sure it intersects the floor. And then we'll paste it. And then you can see the difference. On my left is using the zero data voxel technique in this case with all three dimensions. And on my right is just something I built in the world without using that technique. All right, folks, that about do it for this episode. I'd like to quickly thank my friend Samuel Craftsman for showing me this technique. I've heard about it on the forums and I've seen other videos on it. But his technique and tip here on using these sort of zero data voxel cages was really cool. So thank you for that. And as always, folks, if you enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe. And of course, if you have a comment or question, feel free to leave one in the comment section below. Till next time, everybody, take care.